All right, you're going to love this. For these special videos, we try to take you places nobody else gets to see. Well, this is one good example. This is our breeding center for Japanese giant salamanders. I'm here with Ryan Dumas, who runs the zoo's herp program. Right? Herpetologist? Yep. Herpetology, yep. reptile. Yeah, there you go. The old classics. Ryan's a great guy. Among other things, he handles Cruncher, my favorite alligator. But he also handles these Japanese giant salamanders. I mean, I mean you don't want them to bite you either. I mean, it's generally you don't want to get bit by things. <laughs> uh, you want to avoid things with, with a lot of teeth, and which they do have. Yeah. Uh, but these are some big, big salamanders. I mean, these guys are over four feet, up to four feet long. I think yeah. our biggest one in here is over 30 pounds, Steve. Oh. So it's uh, they're really fun to have. And actually, we are the only zoo in North America, outside of Japan, I think, actually, that maintains our uh, group outdoors all year long. It's a fascinating place because I know these guys live a long time. We've had this species for a long time, but your leap forward was to get them outside rather than just keep them in a climate control room. Yeah, so there hasn't been a lot of success in reproduction with this species outside of Japan. Um, so our thought was they need a lot that we're just not thinking about. Things that right. we can't, you know, natural photo period, the wind, rain, it snowed. This, this pond had two inches of ice on it before that... We were like, oh, it might be too cold, and we hammered through the ice, and then the females just in there looking up at us like, are you going to feed me? We're like, what? Get out of here. This yeah, is, is so, uh, so some all this cool kind of stuff that's kind of um, cutting edge, really, with, yeah. with taking, it's a very well-meditated risk, yeah. a very well-thought-through risk, but we have noticed it hasn't, they have enjoyed well, their time out win, here. It's a win-win, for sure. Yes. But with tons of support from the zoo as well, because it ain't cheap. You know, we have two eight-ton chillers that are keeping the water cool, as the summer in the winter it's no problem right it gets yeah. cold here but in the summer this water can get pretty warm but it never goes above like 56 degrees fahrenheit so and you do get your hands on because those uh, examinations are the real thing absolutely i mean one of our um mantras here is kind of let the animals have their space have their options their choices do what they need to do while we monitor them but at some point you do need to get hands on because you need that close-up visualization to make sure everything's going according to plan and one of those is typically an every year physical examination we do with the vet team here. We recently had one done, and uh, it's just been a while since we'd seen them. And man, I, j I forget how huge they are every time we get yeah. them. It's yeah. an impre I mean, it's a salamander that's four feet long, thirty pounds. I mean, yeah, it's biggest, impressive. Biggest amphibians in the world. Yeah, I mean, they're right up there with their with their cousins. Yeah. And they're actually closely related to ones uh, we have here in the United States, our hellbenders, that's right. which are right up on exhibit at the uh, reptile house, the oldest. Uh, or the oldest zoo building in the country, yeah. so you can kind of go check them out too. And they're they're only two feet long. I say only, so, but compared to a four foot salamander, two foot's kind of small. Now, if folks were looking for hellbenders because they know we live sort of in our part of the country. Where would they have to go to find the hellbenders? Hellbenders are usually going to be seen in some very clear mountain high altitude streams, cold, clear water, not a lot of siltation. Okay, and that's where you might be able to find them, but it's not going to be fun. So it's not very the cold. little Miami, but I've heard some, maybe the Ozarks. Ozarks, they have their yeah. own. Uh, you're looking at the Ozark hellbender, which is a, now a fully different species. And the yeah. St. Louis Zoo is doing great work with them. Yeah. But hellbenders are tough too. They're another in this whole same family. Very tough to reproduce, yeah. and they need it. Well, it's neat to have an area like this that literally is perfectly built for a species like the Japanese giant salamander. And while this area isn't open to the general public, sometimes you can get special tours. Ryan and his colleagues will show you what we're doing with these animals. But thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again.